Welcome to the GTN show. And welcome to Kona. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we're out here obviously ahead of the Ironman World Championships. We're going to be checking in with the pros, checking out some of the new hot tech and just generally soaking it all in. Yeah, we're going to get into all the news in the world of triathlon, including a 180 millimeter deep wheel and some bad news and a horrific bike accident from one of the Ironman World Champs favorites. All right, now for React, things we spotted on social media this past week from the Energy Lab. Yeah, great idea to come and sit here on a very uncomfortable lava rock and do this. We should really take our deck chairs around with us. Possibly the hottest part of the course in yeah. the middle of the day. Anyway, let's get it done. Starting with what we've noticed over the social media and starting with some not very good news. Not and at all. That Kat Matthews had had, has had a run in with a car in Texas where she was doing her final preparation for Kona. And yeah, she's got some pretty serious injuries and won't be starting in Kona. No, so we've heard that it was no fault of her own. A car pulled out in front of her while she was cycling. And yet, I mean, the car is in a really bad state. So, you know, you can only imagine what's happened to Kat herself. Yeah. We have actually heard from Mark. He said uh, she's got small fractures in the skull, two vertebrae, sternum, and a dozen or so stitches. Apparently her ear was quite bad because I think that took sort of the blow on the, on the window. Uh, but as you say, she's in an okay state. She's currently on ice cream and jelly for dinner. Yeah, not something we like to see on social media or anywhere for that matter. Moving swiftly along, and this is a bit more light-hearted one. A runner has become a shepherdess. Basically, she was running in France and sheep started following her and they followed her for the entire run. So this guy's posted that he came across her in, in the woods, basically. He was walking on his own and she told him the story of how the sheep wouldn't stop following her. And uh, then she ran off and they carried on I following her I just love the again. way they keep stopping every time <laughs> she stops her. Oh, she's off again. Let's go. Rumor has it she's still being followed by sheep to this day. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Uh, also, we missed this one uh, a couple of weeks back. This is from the Super League Triathlon in Malibu. It's a uh, fellow Brit, Dan Dixon, uh, not quite nailing the <laughs> swim entry. Yeah, he got his timing all wrong there and went, uh, yeah, arse over tits. Uh, brilliant though, very spectacular. <laughs> Good job. Um, also, Lucy Charles Barkley, we're excited to see racing out here in Kona. Um, um, is on a very fancy new Cube Aryan bike. Uh, it's almost got that kind of, uh, what do you call it, distortion or sort of camouflage Pixelated, effect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like also that they've gone to the extent of getting the Endura kit also with the same graphics on. Yeah, all matchy-matchy, but apparently that's not actually the bike she'll be riding. Uh, she'll be on a sneaky new one for, for yeah, race day. Yeah, yeah, and finally, we have this really cool sign from Ironman 70.3 Augusta. These kids uh, went to the extent of making a sign to cheer their runners on, and they decided to make it on what you shouldn't say. So so they've got these ideas in there saying, need an Uber yet? <laughs> and uh, boo, <laughs> which you really shouldn't say. You're uh, not almost there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys stink and give up. Yeah. Actually, I quite like the, you're not almost there, because one of the worst things is when people say, you're almost there. And you're like, no, I'm not. Yeah. I know I'm not. That's Stop telling lie. me about <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And now it's time for the try news, starting with some not actual try news. It's a new marathon world record. That's right, Ilya Kipchoge has not 30 seconds off his own marathon world record of 201.39 by running 201.09 at the 2022 Berlin Marathon. Yeah, and amazingly, this is his fourth win at the Berlin Marathon and actually a 17th marathon win of 19 starts. That is nuts. I mean, actually, if you work out the pace of this, it's 2.52 per kilometre. Absolutely insane. Absolutely nuts. And actually, if you take into account also the fact he's 37 years old, he led from wire to wire for a margin of five minutes to win this. Absolutely mind blowing. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah. Also in the news, we have the dates for the World Triathlon Championship Series for 2023, and the final, the grand final, will be hosted in Pontevedra in Spain. Yeah, and that'll be on the 23rd to 24th of September. Also announced that Hamburg uh, will host the 2023 Sprint and Relay World Championships. And the Spanish island by Bifa will also host the Multisport World Championships. And that's also, of course, in addition to some other WTCS confirmed dates. So we have Yokohama, 13th to the 14th of May, and a new event in the UK. It's going to be replacing the Leeds event. We're now going to have Sunderland, which is the 29th to 30th of July. Now it's time 
for What The Tech. And if you didn't mention it already, we're here in Kona because next week is the Ironman World Champs, which means a whole bunch of tech is coming out. So watch out for our tech tour videos coming out next week where we'll wrap up all the tech that's released around Kona. But first, Head is actually early to the party and they've released a radical new wheel. It's the Head Jet 180. Yeah, no guesses as to what the 180 means. It is the depth, 180 millimeters. Yeah, you heard us right. Absolutely insane. Now, Ironman obviously banned disc wheels at the Ironman World Championships here in Hawaii due to concerns of risks of the crosswinds with athletes. And Head have very tightly skirted around that rule by making a wheel that kind of is as close to a disc wheel without being a disc wheel. Yeah, I think the deepest wheel that's been ridden at Kona before is a 1080 uh, and mostly a 90 is the deepest you'll see on people's bikes. So this is pretty much double the deepest other wheel that you're going to see out there. And it does raise a bit of a question here because essentially Ironman is going to have to react to this with their rules. They're either going to say it's absolutely fine, you can use this wheel, uh, but you still can't use discs, which seems unlikely. Or they're going to say from now on, you know what, the disc rule is a bit obsolete, you can use disc wheels. Or they're going to say that the rule is there because anything deeper than about 90 is too deep, so from now on you can't use anything deeper than 90. Either way, this may be the only year that we see this wheel ridden in Kona, which is quite interesting. But it's really interesting because Anne Head, who obviously is the founder and owner of Head, is an ex, I believe, professional athlete herself. She's actually come back to race at the Ironman World Championships this year and has decided this is a bit of a I guess a dream project for her and she decided she wanted this wheel to race on. So she's developed this wheel and had her in the, I guess, luxurious position of being able to actually manufacture their wheels in-house. So they've been able to do this themselves and actually giving it to all the athletes who are seeing the likes of Leon Chevalier, Susie Cheatham and various others going to be riding on this wheel. Yeah, so we're definitely going to see some pros riding it. It is 1,229 grams heavy, so very competitive as far as wheels go and yeah we'll see how it performs question is days. would you ride it on the front wheel too i guess technically you could oh, you, you could and yeah. even with like uci tt rules you could whether you'd want to yeah i'm, I'm not, not sure. sure i'm not sure people even want it on the back wheel if it, the wind blows and uh, you know what? it does actually remind me a bit of the old um black hole wheel although i guess it's slightly different because that was kind of like this bearing system around the side yeah yeah that was a that was a pretty radical too i think we need to get hold of one of those also in the tech news, Envy has collaborated with Celitalia to bring out a new saddle. Uh, it's an interesting collaboration because it's basically based on the Celitalia SLR Boost, which is the saddle that we actually ride. Uh, and it's almost the same thing, except they've brought a few new technologies into it and actually managed to reduce the weight to only 130.5 grams for the carbon rail version. Uh, like the SLR Boost, it comes in two different widths, 130 millimeters or 145 millimeters. Uh, and it costs $400 for the carbon rail version and $275 for the aluminium rail version. It's a pretty cool collaboration. Yeah, and I've got to say, it's just interesting to see Envy doing more and more cycling products. I mean, they obviously, we know them for their wheels. They do handlebars and various other components for bikes. They also now do bikes, yeah. road bikes and gravel bikes, and now saddles. Envy taking over the bike wheel. Ooh, yeah, watch that space. Uh, now, moving on, I think I found a bit of tech that you're going to love, James. Now, I, you've used uh, digital tyre pressure before, right? Sure, yeah. Have you ever noticed just how heavy they are when you're using them? I uh, can't say that I have. All oh, right. Well, I thought you might have, so this may not be any good to you. Because Silka have created their 3D printed titanium digital tyre pressure sensor. Wow. Yeah. I know. Uh, it's called the Silka Truth Pressure Gauge, and it's apparently for those that are serious about tyre pressures, is accurate accurate to 0.2% at 0 to 60 PSI and 0.5% at 100 PSI, which Silka believes makes it the most accurate cycling pressure gauge on the market. Wow, you have to be really serious about your tyre pressure for that. Uh, apparently, I mean, apparently it's been quite successful so far though, because it's actually been used to more than 100 World Tour victories and five Paris Roubaix victories since 2010. That is impressive. More, more, more accurate than the, the standard finger pinch method. I don't know. Um, but if you do want to take your tyre pressures this serious, it costs you £250. And probably, although I don't know the actual weight, I'd imagine very light. Well, you know how light my fingers are when I'm just doing the pinch test. Okay. Oh.
Also in our tech news this week, Strava has added a new data layer to its platform, allowing you to find a bike to use. So if you're heading into the city and you're looking for bike share locations, uh, you will now be able to see that on Strava apps. So basically, users can find vendors, locations, and real-time numbers of bikes available for on their Strava maps. Uh, the data layer includes information for more than 600 bike share and scooter systems in 544 cities and 73 countries. And just to be clear, this is where you can find a bike to hire. It's not where you can find another Strava user's bike. <laughs> James has just finished his three hour ride. <laughs> yeah. He won't be needing his bike. Yeah, I'll go grab that. <laughs> Pretty good idea, actually. But, yeah. uh, and finally, because I know you're all on the edge of your seats, the Brooks Sketchers lawsuit has been settled. Yeah, so Sketchers tried suing Brooks a number of months back for the use of the number five that looks like the Sketchers S. Um, that's all been settled, though. So. So good. apparently the five is different to the X. Okay, now for the race news. And this weekend we had Ironman 70.3 Augusta. That was won on the women's side by Grace Alexander. Second was Lottie Lucas. And in third, Sarah Bishop. On the men's side, it was Jason West that took the win. He's having a crack in, yeah? Uh, Trevor Foley in second, and Justin Metzler in third. Yeah, Jason West running a 107 oh. watt marathon there. That was impressive. There was also Challenge San Remo, which is a hop. Uh, Emma Billum took the win there ahead of Justin Garrard of France and Jean Collange from France in third. On the men's side, Italian Gregory Barnaby took the win ahead of William Menenson and Simone Vien in third. Yep, and then we also had IMS 70.3 Cosmel. That was won on the women's side by Gruzza Laralde. Uh, second was Amy Zimmerman and third was Palmira Alvarez. On the men's side, it was Luciano Tacconi that took the win ahead of Flavio Morandini and third, Mark Dubrick. Yeah, and upcoming races this weekend, well, there's only one major race to speak of in the pro division, and that is the Xterra World Championships, not in Maui. Yeah, normally it would be literally not over there, over, somewhere. Yeah. But actually, this time it's in Italy at Novino, which yeah. looks like a stunning course and actually a really challenging course. And I know a lot of the athletes are really looking forward to that. And now it's time to have a look at the stuff that you guys have sent in to us about your triathlon. And remember, you can use the uploader on screen now to upload your own triathlon related pictures and videos and stories of whatever's happened in your triathlon world. We'd love to hear from you. Starting this week with this one from Argo, our good friend from Estonia who sends us stuff quite regularly. Love it. He says, I finished a bucket list race in Han Hanya, 100 miles and about 3,000 meters of elevation on the saddle from sunrise to sunset and then some 13 hours and 39 minutes of pain and pleasure. My sports watch died on me before I did. Just a few kilometers shy of the finish, so I outlasted the battery. That's a good accomplishment, watch. isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Maybe we should try that, Mark. Yeah. Oh, I don't oh, know. These uh, they're pretty good. Have long batteries. <laughs> <laughs> That's maybe not such a good idea. Anyway, no, we'll try that. Forget that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, moving on. Also, this from Marissa uh, from Cambridge in Maryland uh, said I was competing in my first full distance Ironman. They did collegiate triathlon with USC out in LA from 2018 to 2022. But after they graduated and completed a year's long goal, and they completed a year's long goal of finishing an Ironman. The swim was beautiful, even with the jellyfish, and they've sent in a video of those jellies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the bike was amazing with zero wind and the fans along the run course were unmatched. It looks like, I mean, look at that smile across their face yeah, coming across yeah. the finish line. All I can see is the jellyfish in the water. <laughs> look at that video, creepy. And then we had this one from Israel uh, in Tossa del Mar, Spain, and he said, Olympic distance on Tossa del Mar, possibly the best location I've raced. Races like this make it so worthwhile to train year round. Looks like he had a great time out there. Yeah, nice. Um, and finally, we've got a couple of pictures through from Martin uh, from Almere. Uh, first one is them on their lovely P5X, or is that the P3X? P3X, oh, the P3X yeah. isn't it? Sorry. Um, it said, amazing the speed I can get up to on this bike with minimal watts. Yeah, that's what you want from a bike. Lovely. And then you put another picture up of saying, uh, genuine happiness when I crossed the finish line of the European Championships long distance triathlon in Elmia. He said, first triathlon finish in under 10 hours equals happy. It needed nine attempts. I assume it's nine attempts to get under 10 hours and not nine attempts to get his first triathlon long distance finish. And finally, we've got the caption competition. Last week, we had this photo of Richard Murray at the Super League Triathlon in Malibu with his cheeks all puffed out. Great yeah. captions coming in, we had loads. Yeah, we did. Emma G says, 
when your pre-race meal didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> uh, next one, Jessica Bourne. Uh, more Team Hamster than Team che Cheetah. Uh -huh. Yeah, Linda Trong said, I'm literally blown away by this race. Um, and then Matty or Matey, um, athlete meets biggest fan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ray Ishikawa says, me when I check my wallet off the corner. But the yeah. winner is uh, Christian Fiesel or Fessel. Um, I think I swallowed a splooshish. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, yeah, very, I like very it. topical, someone getting bitten by a, by a seal last week. Now this week we have this image, which we actually saw earlier in our react of a sign where they've said all the wrong things for their Ironman competitors. So we want you to leave us in the comments down below using the hashtag caption competition, what you think uh, they should be saying to those athletes or shouldn't be saying to those athletes. Oh, you can have some serious fun with that. Try and be yeah. PC at least. Yeah. Uh, yeah, leave them in the comment section down below. We hope you've enjoyed the show this week. Of course, as we've mentioned already and it's quite obvious we're here in Kona at the Ironman World Champs so we've got loads coming up so please do stay tuned make sure you subscribe if you're not already hit that notification button because we've got tech tours stuff with the pros all sorts it's going to be exciting yeah also head over to the GTN shop because you can get these awesome Kona shirts special edition not these particular ones particularly not Mark's because it's pretty smelly oh, by right. now already and if you're looking for something to watch right now we actually did a beginner v amateur v pro and we used the Kona numbers so that's quite an interesting video uh, they tried to keep the Ironman pro winning power for as long as they could 